Jesus had 12 apostles. He had 12 that he sent. Look at John 20, 21. He said, and he says it several places. This is just one near the end of the Gospel of John. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. In other words, he said, You're apostles. I'm sending you. So they were unique because Jesus sent them. To be one of the twelve apostles, we won't look at it here, but in first in Acts chapter 1, they gave a couple of qualifications. They had to be with Jesus at his baptism and all the way through to his death and resurrection. They had to see his resurrection because they were the testimony. They were the witnesses. And so there was only 12, even though a lot of other people saw his resurrection, and others may have been with him from the time of his baptism, uh, that were, maybe weren't apostles, but no apostle had not been with Jesus, as it says in Acts chapter 1, from the time of his baptism, seeing his whole life, into his resurrection. Why was it from the time of his baptism? Why was that important? Because you remember when Jesus was baptized, everybody that was there heard God speak from heaven. This is my son whom I am well pleased. Woo! That had to be a shocker ruer. So they testified. We heard God speak that Jesus, this man, this man Jesus, is the Son of God. And God said, He's my son, and I'm well pleased with him. And we saw the Holy Spirit come out of heaven and descend on this man, Jesus. They were the testimony. They were the witness. They saw his miracles. They saw him die on the cross. They saw him raised from the dead. They were with him upwards to over 40 days, it says in Acts, for over 40 days. And they saw him ascend into heaven. And my goodness, great witnesses they were. And so Jesus had sent those men out. And they're special because... They had been with Jesus. So there are no more 12 apostles today. What about the Apostle Paul? Because he said, because I have seen the resurrected Christ, I'm one of the 12. Well, he didn't say what you said. You added to that scripture. He didn't say, I'm one of the 12. Paul was one that was born out of, uh, of due season, he says. It, it was unique because Paul, it says, does see, did see Jesus. But you see, seeing Jesus did not qualify you to be an apostle. In Acts chapter 1, it said you had to be with him from the day he was baptized all the way through to his resurrection. So there were some that saw Jesus, even Paul who saw Jesus, but uh, out of uh, 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 kind of as a, in a unique situation. And that gave him added authority, no doubt about that. But nonetheless, that didn't qualify him to be one of the twelve because, uh, because by, by Mosaic law, you had to have witnesses, and they needed to witness uh, uh, from his baptism, seeing, hearing, him, hearing, and seeing the, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit, come in. And they had to be witnesses of his resurrection. And uh, and so, uh, Paul in the Book of Acts, uh, or excuse me, Luke, uh, the, Luke probably wrote the Book of Acts, made it clear that they said this had to be the qualification. So he was kind of one uh, born out of due time. Uh, so he had. You know, a special experience, no doubt about it. But that didn't qualify him to be one of the twelve, as we'll see. So 1 Corinthians 9, 1 is talking about the third type of apostle? No, let me keep going and you'll get the third type. So, uh, so anyhow, you see that uh, the twelve were, were, uh, were special. There's none today that are like the twelve. But then you have the third category, and that's Titus where we'll see the third category. The Holy Spirit's apostles. And the first time you see this happening is in Acts 13 and verse 1. Now there were at Antioch, in the church that was there, prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who is called Niger, and Lucius of Serene, and Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. <coughs> then when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away, so being sent out, by the Holy Spirit, they went. They went from city to city preaching the gospel. So here we see, uh, it says that they were sent out by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, uh, and, the, and if you notice earlier up, it says, And the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And, uh, and they fasted and prayed, laid their hands on them, 
They sent them away, but it's the Holy Spirit who sent them out. It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus. It didn't say Jesus sent them out. It didn't even say God sent them out. It says the Holy Spirit sent them out. And that's what happened generation after generation after that. Uh, now it's also interesting as you go on here. Well, before you go, so where, the word that's used in Greek where it said they were sent out is uh, apologize. Good. Explain, explain uh, it, John. I was, I was wanting spellings. Yeah, oh, A-P-O-L-Y-O in this case. Uh, it's from the, the same same roots and so forth. I mean, it's, 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 it's the same meaning. The same so, it, so on, and, and they sent them away. And, and it's, the word is apollo. Apollo. Oh, it's, it's the root word for, apo uh, for apostle. Mm -hmm. See, that's just what that word means. It's just a sent one. It's a sent one. Jesus was a sent one from God. The twelve were sent once from Jesus. And Paul and Barnabas were sent once from who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. That's right. It's also interesting to note that, uh, and I'll just add this, it's a, it wasn't just Paul, but it was also Barnabas who was called an apostle. Not only here, but later throughout Scripture. Many times it refers to Barnabas as an apostle. Barnabas never saw, there's no indication that Barnabas ever was with Jesus, or even ever saw Jesus, or ever did any miracles, or ever did anything that you think of, wrongly I might add, of apostles. In fact, not only Barnabas, Titus was in, uh, or Timothy, was, uh, was he from Derby or, or Lystra? I can't remember. But Paul met Timothy on one of his first missionary journeys. Do you remember that? And uh, later, Paul had Timothy come and join him. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul said that uh, that letter came from the apostles, from Paul, Timothy, and Silas. And so... In 1 Timothy, we see that Silas was called an apostle. We see even young Timothy was called an apostle, along with Paul the apostle. In other words, Paul identified Timothy and Silas, the same apostle as himself. In fact, he says the, the book was written from them. Interestingly enough, sometimes we think it was only Paul, but Paul, by his own writing, in, said put it in the plural word in 1 Thessalonians. So there was actually, by the way, there's probably over a, um, there's probably over a dozen other apostles that are mentioned in the New Testament. There's several mentioned in Romans 16 that uh, were never with Jesus, uh, never saw Jesus. Uh, and so this is the third category of apostles. They're ones that were sent out afterwards, uh, or missionaries that had the authority uh, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, Barnabas being one. Uh, Timothy, Silas, and quite a number of others. And many of those never even lived in Jerusalem. Timothy obviously did not. And uh, some of the others mentioned in Romans 16 did not. Yes, ma'am? I'm sorry, what scripture is it that you... Oh, well, yeah, the scripture here is, is Acts 13, verse 1. Thank you. Yeah, Acts 13, 1. Jim? Yes, sir. Um, a little bit of a rabbit trail, but not much. Uh, sent out... Paul clearly went in the, the travels of Paul, the right. trips. Um, what about the other apostles? Were they, we don't read much about them, were they heading off to other yes. areas? Yeah, well, you know, the, the, the book, we'd have to have many Bibles, and so God in his providence, uh, just like in the Old Testament, there was lots of prophets, but he didn't record all the prophets. Just like in the New Testament, there was many disciples. Um, you know, we read like Aquila and Priscilla. We just read a, a few sentences about them. But God, all of them have a life that, where they could have been recorded. So all the, all the apostles were sent out. There's no exception to that. If they weren't sent out, they weren't, they weren't an apostle. We just don't know necessarily where. <clears throat> well, we know where a little bit. We know Barnabas went with, uh, with Paul right. on that first missionary journey. We know Timothy and Silas were with, uh, with Paul on a, his second missionary journey. And we get bits and pieces all through the scriptures and in the book of even First and Second Timothy uh, and Titus. We know Titus was with Paul when they went into Crete and he left Titus behind to do what? What apostles did or what missionaries should do was uh, appoint elders in every church in every city, it says. Uh, 
that, that was their function. They would go into cities, they would preach the gospel, they would see people saved, they would explain to them how they're to come together, how they're all priests, how they can all share, and how they can all sing, and how they can all pray, and how they can all share and should share their faith with other people, and how they should remember the Lord on the first day of the week, and, and basically established and built the church, and built love and unity with one another. And then a lot of times they would come back, and uh, when there was a maturity manifested with certain men, they, any man that had the qualifications, they would recognize that these men need to be recognized as your spiritual leaders, and as more got raised up, they would recognize more. So basically they established, they, they, they were the beachhead, they were like the Marines for the military. They went in first, they saw the, the, the church raise up, and, and they followed up too, they didn't just, uh, it wasn't just initially. But we, we do get bits and pieces where others of them went. Um, and, and we read through history and kind of learn too. The 12 apostles, it's interesting, they went in every direction all over the world as far east as China and uh, every other direction, into Africa and all over. We also see that Paul says there was false apostles. And he says this uh, later in the scriptures, in 2 Corinthians and in Revelation, right at the end, which was written, probably one of the last books written. The mere fact that he addresses false apostles only reinforces that there were genuine apostles. You don't talk about uh, false apostles if you say there are none, it, it would not be relevant. And as you'll see in these verses, 2 Corinthians 11, 13, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Notice, he said they were deceitful. He didn't say, for such men are false apostles because there are no apostles. Or he didn't say because they hadn't seen Jesus. Uh, or because of any number of things. He said they're deceitful workers. And uh, they're disguising themselves as apostles. And Revelation 2, 2 is very interesting in how it puts it. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. He didn't say we, you discovered that they never saw Jesus, or you discovered this or that or the other. They discovered they, were, they didn't have the character that apostles would have. Or if, if they didn't exist by then, many falsely think that it was just with the twelve and after that there were no more. He would have just simply said that. Hey, buddy, there's only twelve and that's it. We're done with them. He didn't do that, which he would have, would have very well taken care of it. But he, he was giving, showing why they were false apostles. Not because they, they were not apostles in those days, but these were guys that were, uh, were not honest. I have written down here, there's a false understanding of apostles today in the New Testament. Elders from a leading evangelical church today wrote, I read a letter that they wrote, and they said this, he who says he's an apostle today, that means he can just say anything he wants Tell people what to do and claim that he is speaking for God. This is the mark of a cult leader, not a pastor. Such scriptural leaders only regurgitate their traditions. Spiritual. Pardon me? Spiritual. Where did I? You said scriptural. Spiritual? Yeah, not spiritual. No, such spiritual leaders only regurgitate their traditions. This was not true. Now listen, this was not true of apostles in the New Testament what they just said. This wasn't true of apostles in the New Testament. Much less today. This was not even true of Jesus or the Apostle Paul. Look what with Jesus. So Jesus said, I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. And Jesus answered and said to them, Why do you yourself transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, and he went ahead and said what God said. Jesus didn't independently start just speaking on his own initiative. It was only what God said, and basically he took it off from the law. He never, ever contradicted the law. Did you know that? Everything Jesus preached was basically the commandments of God, the law of God, and from the scriptures. Jesus didn't just come up with his own uh, unilateral uh, Bible. In fact, if you read in Matthew 5, he said he came to fulfill that. He came to live out the law, it says in Matthew chapter 5. And he said, if you ignore and don't teach the least of these commandments, you'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
How many of us might be least in the kingdom of heaven because we ignore so much of God's law? That's what Jesus said. He, he said, I didn't come to abolish it. But he said, whoever does it and teaches it will be great in the kingdom of heaven. Now we know that Christ fulfilled the law when it came to the sacrificial law, don't we? Because we don't sacrifice sheep anymore or ox for our sins. So Christ fulfilled that part of the law. But all the moral law and the penal law, that's still in place. The Ten Commandments are still in place. If the law wasn't in place, we wouldn't have to put God first in our lives. The first commandment is, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of slavery, and you shall have no other God before me. Jesus even said, all the law and all the commandments are summed up in two things. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So if the law is gone, we don't have to love God, we don't have to love our neighbor. Of course the law isn't gone. Where the law is gone or done with is the curse for judgment because we've fallen short. That part of the law is done with, with us. But it's not done with